Good evening. I'll call this meeting of the Salem City Council for Monday, October 9th, 2023 to order. If the recorder will please call the roll. Councilor Stapleton. I'm here. Councilor Nishioka. Here. Councilor Phillips. Here. Councilor Gwen. Here. Councilor Gonzalez. Here. Councilor Hoy. Here. Councilor Nordyke. Here. Councilor Varney. Here. Mayor Hoy. Here. If you'll join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right, Councilor Stapleton, do we have any additions or deletions to the agenda? Not tonight. Thank you. It's time for council and city manager comments. I would just like to start by welcoming Deputy City Manager Krishna Nambori up to the dais in uh, place of our city manager who is on a much deserved vacation. So welcome. And I'm gonna just start by saying uh, we had a successful launch for commercial passenger air service in the city of Salem this uh, last week. I was really pleased uh, to be on the inaugural flight along with Councillor Hoy and the, a number of members of our community. We had uh, Mr. Hoffert from the Salem Chamber, uh, a, a number of folks who were on the first flight and uh, it was a lot of fun and a lot of excitement uh, for, the, for the launching of that service. So I'm sure there will be more to be said about that, but thank you for everybody who came out to uh, launch that service and for the great community support. I think there's a lot of excitement in the community for this. And, was really grateful to be a part of it. We did have a little hiccup that you might read about in the paper uh, on the return flight, just a little bit of a delay, uh, but that happens these days when you fly. It happens, it, but it all worked out in the end. So there you have it. And does anybody else have any comments? By the way, I would just, I'm gonna just have to say it out loud. If you get the chance to go to Vegas, go to the Sphere and watch you 2 in concert. It's, it is indescribably amazing. So, other comments? Councilor Phillips. Um, it's flu season again, uh, and as people know, uh, Trevor Phillips, uh, Councilor for Ward 3. Um, I'm an emergency room doctor here in the community and have been for over 15 years, and we still need your help on the front lines of healthcare. So, um, you know, for everybody 12 and up, you can get your uh, yearly booster for the COVID vaccine. And uh, they also have vaccines available for influenza. And if you're 60 and up, uh, RSV as well. So I, I got my, uh, my COVID shot today and I got my uh, influenza shot uh, last week at my primary care doctor's office. So I just want to remind people to do that. It helps us out quite a bit. Counselor, I'm happy to report that I got both shots same day about a week and a half ago. Um, I had to go to state and to find an appointment, but I found an appointment because I wanted to have it before I got on that plane to Vegas and uh, it was great. So thank you for that reminder. Other comments? Councilor Nordyke. Good evening, one and all. It's great to see you. Councilor Nordyke here reporting to you from remote location. Uh, a couple of updates. Um, although I was not on the flight uh, this past Thursday, I was one of many counselors and other dignitaries, looky loos, reporters, and so on, who attended the celebration at the Salem Airport. And I just want to commend the city staff. When we made the motion earlier this year, it was just January of this year when we made a really key motion towards directing the staff to turn the concept of commercial air service into a reality and in that time the mayor and i and numerous other members of the community uh ceo tom hoffert councillor nishioka uh numerous members of city staff and other stakeholders we have been meeting in earnest to make this a reality and i'm just so proud of how quickly the staff acted to make this happen. It truly is extraordinary to create commercial service in such a short amount of time. There are so many steps involved to making an airport truly ready for federalized flights. And it involves a lot of coordination with the TSA and the airporting, the airline in question, Avello Airlines. So again, kudos to everyone who was involved in that, particularly our staff who worked really hard to make this happen. Uh, next, I'd also like to give a shout out to the Holman Hotel. 
I was at an event at the Holman Hotel, and in case you're not familiar with it, it is located downtown, kitty corner from the Salem Convention Center. It is truly a beautiful space, and the general manager shared with us who are there for the event that since the Holman has opened, it has generated about 60 jobs for the downtown area, and they conservatively estimate that hotel guests spend about $4 million annually in all the little activities they do while they are staying downtown, whether it's going across the street to buy a cup of coffee, visiting our local art galleries, boutiques, bistros, delis, etc. So much that downtown has to offer. And as I recall, the, I remember when the vote came to council for us to provide a little financial support towards making this hotel a reality. So I'm really excited that we as a council have done our part to support economic development right in our downtown core. Even though most of us do not represent downtown in terms of where our council boundaries are, I feel strongly that downtown is really our living room. It is the city of Salem's living room. So every member of council has a vested interest in seeing downtown thrive. So I really want to congratulate the Holman Hotel on their success so far. And if you know folks who are looking for a place to stay in town, I hope you'll consider referring folks their way. Another point that I'd like to make is that now that we have more beds in the downtown area, this works out perfectly with the creation of commercial air service. What I know from talking to business leaders and tourism and hospitality leaders in our area is that the fact that we now have commercial service and we have the remodeled Salem Hotel Salem in South Salem, and we have additional bed space in down our downtown core, this will open up Salem to opportunities that hitherto were unthinkable for our area. Basically, we can now accommodate more trade shows, more conventions, more business travelers, more government travelers, and all kinds of athletic competitions and so on. And it's because we've made transportation easier and we have increased the number of hotel beds available. So I expect us to continue to see positive results from both the resumption of air service and our investment into spaces like the Holman Hotel to have ripple effects on our entire economy. So I'm really excited about that and wanted to share that information. Uh, next, I wanted to uh, share some announcements with you folks. On Tuesday, November 7, Councillor Nishioka, Councillor Gwynn, and I will be hosting a South Salem Town Hall at 5.30 p.m. at the Westminster Church in South Salem. Details are on my Facebook page. And I'm really hoping that members of South Salem, the South Salem residents and business owners, all of whom would qualify as members of our neighborhood associations, to come down and talk with us. We will have a presentation on topics near and dear to the hearts of our South Salem residents and business owners, things like development, public safety, and so on. But we will also have an opportunity for Q&A so that members of the public can ask us questions. It is my hope that by providing this town hall, we will have more opportunities to build community within the South Salem area. And as I've mentioned this topic before, I certainly encourage my peers for other parts of South Salem to host town halls in your neck of the woods to ensure that you're providing access and engagement with your constituents. I'm so excited that Councillors Nishioka and Gwen can join me for this event. And I hope that y'all can join us. Once again, that's Tuesday, November 7 at 5.30 p.m. We will be holding it from 5.30 to 6.45 p.m. At 7 p.m., the Westminster Church is still reserved, but we're going to transition into a neighborhood association meeting starting at 7 p.m. That's what this church is where the Southwest Association of Neighbors holds its monthly meetings. So the, hence the venue space and hence this location. Uh, they have ample parking and it is ADA accessible. And we would just love to see you there. So please come, bring your questions. And uh, I'm also hoping that we will see some chairs for some of the South Salem Neighborhood Association show up 
clipboard in hand to sign up folks who are not currently active in their neighborhood associations. This is not only an opportunity for South Salem residents and business owners to hear from me and their counselors, but it's also an opportunity for our neighborhood associations to remind folks that they are available, that they want active participation, and that they need that active engagement because collectively we can improve livability in South Salem. We can keep an eye on our vulnerable neighbors. We can keep an eye out for public safety matters, whether it's mailbox theft or stealing packages from people's doorways or any other type of crime that can arise in South Salem. I just love opportunities to build community and that's why we are doing the South Salem and all South Salem Town Hall. And of course it is free and open to the public. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Deputy City Manager Nambori, would you do you have some comments for us? I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, um, everyone. Um, so just, uh, just about a year ago, on October 24th, 2022, the council tasked us with a clear mission, find a way to revive commercial air service in Salem. Then in January of this year, the mayor and the council collectively made the decision to bring commercial air service back to Salem for the first time since 2008. So to get this done, we relied on partnerships. Our project team was a collaboration of city staff, CB2 architects, cedar mill construction, and modern building systems. We extend our heartfelt appreciation to our partners at the TSA and FAA, as well as our local champions, Travel Salem, the Salem Area Chamber of Commerce, and Fly Salem for their unwavering support. Uh, so this achievement is a testament to the power of collaboration and determination. So, and, and, and last Thursday, we did it. Uh, so we owe a tremendous uh, debt of gratitude to key individuals who played pivotal roles. Um, John Pascal, um, our airport manager, who not only worked tirelessly on the security plan, but also assembled a dedicated team to support this vital work. Uh, Jim Bonnet, who came out of retirement to lend his expert project management skills on delivering the airport improvements. Alan Dannon, who helped assemble uh, a design and construction team to support Jim. Um, Mark Bechtel for his exceptional oversight and uh, stellar communication throughout this project. And of course, Brian Martin, who the glue that held it all together. Um, <laughs> so we, we also want to um, extend our sincere gratitude to the dedicated airport staff. Uh, with their, without their hard work and dedication, none of this would have been possible. Um, Aaron Eisen, Joey Langenhorst, Kendrick Arakaki, Micah Aldrich, Patrick Tope, Matthew Brooks, Dave Buzek, and Jay Luciana. Thank you for your outstanding contributions. So may I request the city staff uh, to stand up, please? And Thank you. As we look back on this journey, it has been an incredible experience. Uh, we faced challenges, made some um, tough decisions, and we persevered. So today, we celebrate the successful revival of a, a, a commercial air service in Salem, a significant milestone to our community. I want to express our profound gratitude to Mayor Hoy and the City Council for their steadfast determination in seeing this through. Uh, your leadership has been indispensable in bringing us to this moment. So thank you all for your hard work, dedication, and in support in making this dream a reality. Uh, we do have a slideshow of some pictures to share with you, so please enjoy. Thank you.
Yeah, that's. We the, need some music. Yeah, we need some music. <laughs> Maybe some you too. So, Mayor, now you get to see how it looked from outside. Yeah. So in those pictures, you do see some of our airport staff and, uh, and, and the project team. Mayor, what was it like inside the plane when you guys were taxiing and taking off? It was really exciting. There was a lot of great energy. People were super excited. When we went through the, <clears throat> the water mm -hmm. uh, from the fire department, that was really cool. We got to, because it kind of sucked through the engines and that created kind of a spectacular, yeah, it was, it was great. Everybody was super positive. Really excited to, to be on the first flight, for sure. Well, we had a little party going on down at the flight deck, and the city manager was there and gave a great speech um, thanking all of the people. Um, and we had a lot of great partners there. Um, and it was so fun to watch y'all taxi, and uh, again, a lot of really positive vibes on the ground as well. That's great. Great to hear. Yeah, it was wonderful on the plane. People were clapping, and I don't know, Counselor, if you have any thoughts on what you experienced? Oh my goodness. Um, I will never get over the smiles on uh, Krishna and um, uh, where is he? Brian Martin's face when I was being searched um, <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't pass the gunpowder test or something. I'm not sure what happened there, but I did shake hands with the chief of police at a meeting earlier, so maybe that was it. <laughs> anyway, no, it was wonderful and um, you know, I wore a sequin jacket on purpose. A lot of sparkles going yes. on. Yes, when the sun came through the light in the window of the plane, things were lit up in a big way. So it was very fun. Just thank you to everyone. And returning home, I must say, that tiny little walk from that plane to your bag, to your car, I was home in no time. And I look forward to that again in the near future. For sure, thank you for bringing that up, Counselor. From the time our wheels touched down till the time I picked up my check bag, got in my car and got home 30 minutes from wheels down to being home. I mean, that was pretty amazing. They had, they had bags off that plane. I'm like, where did they, how did they get those bags? Cause I mean, there was literally no time and they had the whole, they had, they were coming at us. It was, it was really amazing. One more thing for me to add. When I saw Mark Bechtel and Ron Peters in dealing with the baggage, I was like, do you guys ever sleep? I mean, they're just here doing all the jobs. So yeah. thank you for that, too. It was really a great team effort and really, really an exciting thing for our community. Counselor, did you have one more thing? Um, I just had a quick comment, counselor comment, not about airplanes. Oh, sorry. Go. Yes. <laughs> are we are we ready to transition? Way to kill the buzz, but go for it. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, no, it's fine. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> It was fun, okay? Yeah, it was great. Um, I ahead. also just wanted to say that we also had our ops building opening. Um, Thank you. And yes. it was just, it was quite the week um, here in Salem. So I wanted to highlight Brian Martin and his staff for the amazing uh, presentation that they gave of an amazing building um, that really is a community asset. Um, and I'm sure others can speak more to it, but I just wanted to, to bring that up here and make sure that we gave it the attention that it deserves. Thank you, Counselor. That wasn't a buzzkill at all. Lots of local uh, local wood products from Ferris Lumber in that building. It's really a beautiful building out on the Public Works campus. The Giant Scissors got a big workout last week. It was a busy busy week for them. So thanks, everybody. Yeah, Counselor Hoy. Counselor comments, oh, Counselor comments um, if you don't mind. Um, I. As an employer, uh, we work with a lot of really wonderful people uh, in Salem, and we especially enjoy the work that we do with folks with disabilities. And I, we've done that for a long time since we've been at Geppetto's and have worked closely with Garten Services. And I don't want to ruin a surprise or anything, but there will be a proclamation tonight, National Disability Employment Awareness, Awareness Month. And I wanted to spotlight one very special person who, um, came to Geppetto's after uh, the recycling center work shut down for folks with disabilities. She'd worked there for decades. Her name was Dorothy Kilmer, um, and she died last month. Uh, she did great work for us. She was a very hard worker. Um, she loved to work. Dorothy loved cats and babies 
and making and giving cards and gifts for every occasion. She loved Wednesdays, teamwork Wednesdays with Brandon Costin and making pizzas together at the end of their shift. She worked for decades at Garten in that recycling center and she was known to say if the line ever shut down, come on, I've got bills to pay. <laughs> she was a treasure and Dorothy will be missed. So I offer this picture of Miss Dorothy and my condolences to her family and I just, I've never met a harder working, working woman who knew how to fight for what she needed and um, do what she wanted. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any additional comments? Councillor Gwynn. And I had the privilege on Friday of yes. giving a proclamation yeah. for, uh, on your behalf um, to Lorraine Vickery, who turned 105 years old on October 5th. And she has been a resident at Capitol Manor, the longest um, resident of 29 years. She's lived in the Salem area for 60 years. Um, just a delightful lady. So thank you so much for letting me do that. It was an honor. Um, thank you for doing that. Pardon? Thank you for doing that. Oh, it was, it was so much fun. And then I got to go to lunch after, and so nice. yeah. yeah. Um, that, I'm, I'm 60, so I'm not quite old enough, but I'm telling you, that's a treasure that we have in Capitol Manor. Capitol Manor is a special place for it sure. It is amazing, yeah. Um, on Saturday, I observed a Braver Angels. Um, so Braver Angels is an organization that is trying to bring political folks together from, so folks from, the, from progressive and conservative and finding common ground and how to communicate with one another. Um, so it's the first time I've been exposed to them, but it was an amazing experience. The workshop was um, six hours. Um, I was an observer, so didn't get to say much, but just learned a whole lot. So I would love to see something like that come our way. So that's all I have. Thank you, Councillor. Any other comments? All right, we will get started then with proclamations. We have four tonight, and I have uh, enlisted the help of my colleagues to do all of those. But we are going to start with a proclamation on uh, Hands and Words Are Not For Hurting Week. So I would like to invite Ann Kelly and Denise Bowles up front here to uh, receive the proclamation. Up here. Well, you, can, you can speak at that podium if you'd like, but no, you got to come down here. It's the rules. I don't make the rules. No, I do actually. <laughs> he does too. I do actually. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. I'll just start by reading this, and then we're going to have a little project. You all have pens on paper on your desk, so stand by for, for a little lesson here. Whereas a community without abuse, violence, and suicide is a dream we all share, and whereas any form of mistreatment of another is abuse, and all people have the moral and legal right to live free of abuse and violence, and whereas each of us must come to understand that it is within our personal power to choose not to abuse and violence to resolve conflict, whereas we recognize that respect for ourselves and others is key to developing healthy relationships at every age and in all circumstances, and whereas the principle of nonviolent resolution of conflict must be taught to our children and practiced within each of our families, and whereas verbal and emotional abuse can be just as damaging as physical violence to a person's self-worth, creating scars that are carried for the rest of their life, and whereas verbal abuse, such as name-calling, insulting, and belittling, frequently escalates into simple force like pushing, grabbing, or slapping, and the worst scenario is the escalation to rage, serious violence, and even murder. And whereas self-harm and suicide must be acknowledged as a serious public health crisis, as numbers of victims continue to escalate in children, teens, and adults. And whereas together, with communities around the country and overseas, recognize the Hands and Words Are Not For Hurting Project's Purple Hands Pledge is an effective tool in abuse, violence, and suicide prevention education. 
And now therefore, I, Chris Hoy, Mayor of the City of Salem, do hereby proclaim October 15 through 21, 2023 as Hands and Words Are Not for Hurting Week and encourage residents to join hands and hearts to unite as a family and a community to pledge that I will not use my hands or words for hurting myself or others. Dated this ninth day of October, 2023. Well, it is a great honor to be here and to have the support of this community for 26 years it started in our Salem-Kaiser Public Schools with a simple idea to take this pledge. And in your packet, you'll see um, a place to sign the pledge yourself. And the Salem Hospital has been 100% behind this organization and this movement for all these years. And um, I just... I just don't know how to thank you enough. We have to keep this going because we know it is saving lives and it's changed the climate of our schools around. It's about accepting every human being as valuable and irreplaceable. And if it's blind to the uh, inclusive, all people, all colors, it's not black, white, or brown hand, it's a purple hand representing all of humanity and our and our moral and legal right to live free of abuse and violence. So take this pledge with your families. It's for every family. And there's a letter um, in your packet there that simple talking points about that. When you're not angry, decide ahead of time. I won't call you names. I won't put you down. I won't touch you in anger. And to help us to remember, it's to be repeated often in our schools, daily, and the purple hands that are traced and signed as their uh, contract with one another. They're visible reminders because we need to be reminded. Everything we do, we learn by repetition. So day after day, week after week, year after year. And we now have a second generation of parents in this community teaching their children the pledge in their homes because they learned it at school or Boys and Girls Club, or other places who, who sponsor this um, movement. And I'd like to introduce Denise Bowles, a community education representative for Salem Health, to tell you about something pretty exciting coming right up next week. Thank you, Ann. It's, um, I'm Denise Bowles with Salem Health, and we've been delighted to partner with Ann at Hands and Not for Hurting Project um, this past few months. Um, I remember how old it is because it was started the month before my oldest child was born. And um, my kids were, had the opportunity to go through the schools and, um, and take the pledge. And I'm sure everyone in this room has heard or had their kids partake in the pledge. Um, I just wanted to <clears throat> say a couple things that um, we as a health system, you know, we think about the pledge as something we do in schools. But we've decided and we partnered with them because it is something that we need to pledge as a community. And um, that I just wanted to just share a few statistics that um, healthcare workers are four times more likely to experience violence at work than any, under, any other industry. 44% of nurses report experiencing physical violence and 68% report experiencing verbal abuse during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, this workplace violence has a lot of consequences on them, on our patients, on our community. And so this year at our health system in the hospital, um, we have really committed to the concept of um, harmful words and actions, or hands and words are not for hurting the part project in our community. We operate under the principle that no patient, employee, or provider harm is acceptable to us. So we would like to invite everyone in this room, whoever is listening in the community, um, to our campus next Tuesday at noon, where in the, lo the lobby of Building D, where we are going to join with our community and take the pledge together. Um, and there will be, um, again, you know, different things that will be available at that time. So it's at noon. Um, our CEO, Cheryl Nestor Wolf, will say a few words, and then DA uh, Paige Clarkson is going to say a few words. Um, and we are just really excited to be able to, uh, again, um, you know, just uh, do just the reminder that we can all can just stop for a second and think about what our words and what our actions can do 
to help others or to hurt others, and um, and just to commit to to a nonviolent way of living. So thanks for letting me have a few minutes, and I just want to give Anne. She is a tremendous force of nature in this community, and we are blessed by you and your leadership um, in in this in, in these concepts. So thank you, Anne. Thank you, but it's an idea. The people in this community put it into action. It's only an idea until you make it happen. Thank you so much. Thank you both for being here. And I noticed that our, my colleagues have all taken the pledge while we've been talking up here. And I'm gonna do the same thing as when I return to my desk here. And I'm gonna invite up next for our next proclamation, Councillor Gwynn, who will be reading the White Cane Safety Proclamation. Would you like to introduce the folks to come up? And could we have, is it Marha Byers? Marja, Marja Byers, Maria Ruiz, and Aaron Ross. We don't have. We we don't have. Oh. Aaron's deaf blind. She needs to have an in-person interpreter. Oh, okay. Well, I'm so sorry we couldn't accommodate that. Whereas the city of Salem recognizes that everyone has the right to equality, opportunity, independence, and freedom, and whereas we also recognize that those in our community who are blind or otherwise disabled have the same rights as they pursue employment and full participation in the economic and social life, and whereas we understand that the white cane is not only a tool used by those who are blind to travel independently and safe, safely, but is also a symbol of their rights as they pursue their goals. And whereas we recognize that these rights are protected through laws at the local, state, and federal levels through legislation known as the White Cane Law in an effort to prevent accidents, and whereas we urge motorists to act courteously, courteously and take proper precautions when encountering blind pedestrians on our streets and sidewalks, and now, therefore, on behalf of Mayor Chris Hoy of the City of Salem do hereby proclaim October 15th, 2023 as White Cane Safety Day and invite the community to use this occasion to reflect upon the significance of the white cane and to su support employment and full integration of blind individuals in our city. Dated this ninth day of October, 2023. I'm gonna keep it brief. I know you're busy, you've got a busy schedule tonight. Um, I just wanted to speak quickly about what Oregon's Light White Cane Safety Law is. And it essentially states that if you come to an intersection, whether it be a lit controlled intersection, whether it be a stop intersection, or even an unmarked intersection, corner to corner is always considered an intersection, you are always to yield to a blind pedestrian or deafblind pedestrian, which means anyone with a white cane or a guide dog is considered blind or deafblind. And you need to wait until that pedestrian and their dog or their cane are completely out of the roadway before you enter that roadway. Many people do not understand this. Um, I have tunnel vision. I have less than 10 degrees field, but I have pretty clear vision and I see people turning in front of me frequently and it's, it's frightening. Cars coming too close to my dog can very much scare him. Um, so please be mindful. The other thing that I really want you to be mindful of is, yes, October 15th is actually now International White Cane Safety Day. For us, every day is White Cane Safety Day. Please try and be mindful of us when we're in the street. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Did you want, did you want to say something? Good job. All right, and now we will invite up Councillor Varney uh, to read the National Walk to a Park Proclamation, National Walk to a Park Day Proclamation. Thank you. For it's on. Okay. Thank you very much. I would like to invite uh, Dylan McDowell, Chair of the Salem Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, to come on up and I believe is Kristen Kovalik on attending remotely. 
Okay, okay. He's Thank you for being here, Dylan. Yay. <laughs> Whereas a 10 minute walk to a park goal contributes to healthy, livable communities for generations to come, and whereas high quality and accessible parks are anchors of equitable, economically thriving, safe and vibrant American cities and have the power to transform communities. And whereas cities that both prioritize existing parks and create new life enhancing ways for people to get outdoors and be active are directly serving local residents, their health and resilience. And whereas parks have clear health, community, and environmental benefits from creating space for physical activity and recreation, to strengthening community connections and building a sense of place and belonging, to regulating urban temperatures and offering protection from flood and stormwater, to providing cost savings and economic benefit to local economies, and whereas despite the importance of parks and green spaces, there is a park equity divide across the U.S. where one in three U.S. residents, 100 million people, including 28 million children, do not have access to, quality park, to a quality park or green space within a 10-minute walk of home. And whereas this park equity divide is in part the result of decades of inequitable planning, practice, and policy decisions, and where complex social and historical contexts also contribute to many aspects of this park equity divide. And now, therefore, I, for Chris Hoy, mayor of the city of Salem, Oregon, do hereby proclaim October 10th, 2023, as National Walk to a Park Day in Salem and encourage everyone to walk to a park and enjoy the benefits of our green space and community. Dated this ninth day of October, 2023. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilor Varney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's really exciting, you know, as chair of the Salem Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, we're always looking for exciting things happening across the country. And the Trust for Public Lands, which really leads this effort, is a national leader on ensuring equitable access to nature. And I think this effort is we're going to get a lot of really exciting ideas from across the country to make sure we can bring this in. And it, it's such a great time for Salem. We have our Salem. We have the Climate Action Plan. We'll be updating our Parks Comprehensive Plan in a year or so. And I'm so excited as uh, through the Parks Board and with all of you that we can work together on, on really making sure that everyone here can have 10 minutes walking to a park, to a green space. And so tomorrow I invite you all to go out to find the local park, a neighborhood park, whichever it is for you, um, and enjoy that time. And I hope that we can make sure that's a reality for all residents. So thank you all so much, and thank you both. Thank you very much, Dylan. Here you go. Thank you. All right, so now. Turn on my mic. All right, now I would like to invite up Councillor Phillips to read the National Disability Employment Awareness Month proclamation. Testing? Is it working? Yes. Okay, so I'd like to invite up um, anyone from Garden Services and Project Search to join me up here in front. And Albertina Kerr. Come on down. Hi. Hello. How are you? Hi. 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 Welcome. Hey. Hi. 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 Good to see you. <laughs> okay, this proclamation. Whereas National Disability Employment Awareness Month had its origins in 1945 when Congress declared the first week in October as National Employ the Physically Handicapped Week with the word physically removed in 1962 to acknowledge individuals' needs and contributions with all kinds of disabilities. In 1988, Congress expanded the week to a month. And whereas the 2023 theme, disability, part of the equity equation showcases supportive, inclusive, 
employment policies and practices for workers with disability and whereas recognizing the resolve and determination of people with disabilities the city of salem is proud to collaborate with area agencies such as garden services and project search to advance and promote diverse and productive workforce and whereas by working with our community partners, the city of Salem is committed to opening its doors to residents, including an innovative nine month intern, uh, internship program for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And now therefore, on behalf of Chris Hoy, Mayor, City of Salem, Oregon, do hereby proclaim October 2023 as National Disability Employment Awareness Month and encourage all residents and businesses to participate in actively putting people with disabilities to work and recognizing their important contributions to our local economy. Dated this ninth day of October, 2023. Thank you. I do have a few words. Um, it is an honor to accept this proclamation on behalf of Garden Services. Um, an organization that has made it our mission to empower individuals with disabilities through employment and help them secure competitive community jobs. Um, and I'd like to express my deepest appreciation to all of the, those who championed this cause from the legislators and advocates who tirelessly work to promote equal opportunities such as uh, City of Salem and Geppetto's um, and to the dedicated team at Garden who tirelessly uh, support our mission daily. Um, at Garden, we do more than provide employment opportunities. We believe in nurturing talent, fostering growth, and breaking down the barriers that have held back so many individuals with disabilities. And our commitment extends beyond our doors as we work diligently to ensure that our employees with disabilities thrive within our organization and that our clients seeking opportunities can secure competitive jobs in our broader community. So this month, as we celebrate National Disability Employment Awareness Month, let us remember that disability does not define a person's potential. Our collective responsibility is to ensure that every individual has a chance to reach their full potential. Thank you. Thank you. And this is yours. And then be glad if you see it. This is small home. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul Hines. Um, I am here as an advocate for Albertina Kerr and Project Search and these wonderful interns that I have with me. Um, so I just want to give you guys a little bit of information about the program. Project Search is a nine-month internship for individuals that experience intellectual and developmental disabilities. The idea is that through a nine-month internship where the interns are coming every day, they're learning things through in uh, what we call a classroom professional development time where we're building skills like communication, how to read a paycheck, um, small talk, mental health benefits, um, things like that throughout the day. And then after that, they go into various rotations in the community and they're actually working with mentors in the city and learning very specific transferable job skills. Over the nine month period, they work in three different departments. So they learn a variety of, of those transferable skills. They're building their resume and they're making connections and making references, you know, building that professional network. Um, so I just want to thank the city. I want to thank Michelle, um, everyone here, Mayor Hoy, everyone involved, um, specifically the departments that we're partnered with, the fire department, GIS, public works, payroll, human resources, information technology, um, all over the city. Um, so our interns are learning very, very unique jobs through that period of time. Um, and I do just want to do a quick plug. If anyone is interested, wants to know more, this goes for everyone, city employees as well, and anyone in the community. We are doing an information session this Wednesday at 1130 at the library in the Anderson Room, where I will be and these wonderful people will be as well. So thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. Great night for proclamations. Thank you to all my colleagues for sharing the, the, uh, the reading of the proclamations. We are now on to public comment. And we have one person signed up. That's Nate Levin. If you come on up to the podium, 
hit the microphone button there, you remind, introduce yourself with either your address or your ward, and remind you you have three minutes. When the yellow light starts flashing, that, that means you're down to one minute. When the red light turns on, that means your time is up. Go ahead. Hit that button for me to turn the light on. There we go. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. My name is Nate Levin. I uh, live at uh, 695 Winding Way, Southeast. And um, I've been involved in real estate, property management, and uh, industrial and commercial investment activity for just shy of 50 years in Salem. Um, the reason for my comments this evening have to do with the proposed tree canopy on parking lots. And the principal concern is having the tree coverage for 30 to 40 percent of a parking area is within the additional um, area needed to provide the necessary parking for the associated businesses. So if there is a business that requires substantial parking when you add the component of the necessary area for a 30 to 40 percent uh, canopy and if you take a look at some of the submittals from uh, Mr. Easterly and some of the other comments there is there is no clear statement as far as where this is going to apply is it in the urban development area? Is it the downtown area? Does it apply citywide? And the reality is that for industrial applications, having an unrestricted, open, or uncluttered area for normal truck, tra truck traffic is critical to their use and operation. You can't put in areas for landscaping in the middle of a driveway where you're going to have a 53-footer trying to back down or hook or unhook to tractors, etc. It just doesn't work. So, so if there is a possibility to add additional landscape area, that's one conversation. But using the drawing that was submitted with the Planning Commission report shows something that's very suitable for a simple retail operation that is only for customers but doesn't have anything to do with truck service or people supplying, picking up, et cetera. It's also not viable for people that run businesses like um, Fred Myers, Costco, et cetera. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Anderson Ogilvy, could you clarify, are we, if we do take, if we take action tonight, is, we're gonna set this for a public hearing, is that correct? Where we will have an opportunity to hear all of the arguments and potentially make amendments, is that accurate? Correct, yes, it's Great. scheduled for a public hearing on November 13th. November 13th, so that would be the time when we could consider amendments or issues, input that we're getting from the community tonight. We'll just, sim tonight's vote simply will either set it for a hearing or it won't. So we'll have an opportunity in November to really dive into the issues that you're talking about and others. So I appreciate you bringing them to our attention. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We are on to the consent calendar. Councillor Stapleton. I move approval of the consent calendar. Second. M motion by Stapleton, second by Phillips. Councillor, to your motion. Thank you. Yes, we just have one item on tonight's consent agenda. That's item 3.1A, the September 25th, 2023 draft city council minutes. And that concludes the consent calendar. Any discussion? Will the recorder please call the roll? Councillor Nordyke. Aye. Councillor Varney. Aye. Councilor Stapleton? Aye. Councilor Nishioka? Aye. Councilor Phillips? Aye. Councilor Gwynn? Aye. Councilor Gonzalez? Aye. Councilor Hoy? Aye. Mayor Hoy? Aye. Motion passes. All right. We have no public hearings. We have no special orders of business. Uh, we have no information reports. We're getting this thing done tonight. 
But we do have some ordinances, so we're on to item 7.1. Okay, I'll be um, enlisting the help of Zira, our artificial intelligence, to read this first ordinance, so here goes. Bill number 723, an ordinance relating to the development of large parking lots, park and rides, and single room occupancy housing, amending SRC 111 .001, 112.001, 120.005, 220.005, 400.020, 510.005, 511.005, 513 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 510.015, 
All yes, right. Mr. Mayor? Yes, go ahead, Councillor. I didn't, sorry, I didn't see your hand. No worries. I know it's difficult when I'm appearing remotely. Uh, good evening once again, folks. I will be voting in support of the motion. I really appreciate the fact that we had public testimony on this tonight. This definitely goes to show to, that any time we need to make amendments to our code that can potentially have citywide impacts, it's important for us to conduct public hearings. So I will be supporting the motion and I'm hopeful that staff can continue to roll out more information to talk about this issue and help educate everyone, myself included, on the purposes behind this hearing and the proposed amendments. I encourage folks watching at home, if you have not already done so, please make sure to read the city staff report that accompanies this first reading tonight. That should give you uh, a primer on what, to, what is to come if indeed this motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor, for the discussion. If the recorder will please call the roll. Councillor Barney. Aye. Councillor Stapleton. Aye. Councillor Nishioka. Aye. Councillor Phillips. Aye. Councillor Gwynn. Aye. Councillor Gonzalez. Aye. Councillor Hoy. Aye. Councillor Nordyke. Aye. Mayor Hoy. Aye. Motion passes. Now on to item 7.1B. Ordinance Bill Number 51523, an ordinance relating to amending the Salem Transportation System Plan, a component of the Salem Area Comprehensive Plan, and amending SRC 64.005. Councilor Varney. Thank you. Um, I move to direct the city manager to schedule a public hearing on Ordinance Bill 15-23 for the purpose of amending the Salem Transportation System Plan in order to reclassify Landegard Drive Northwest as a local street and to extend Col Colorado Drive Northwest East as a collector street to connect with Dokes Ferry Road. Second. Motion by Varney, second by Stapleton. Councilor, to your motion. Uh, this uh, has to deal with the recent uh, Titan Hill development that we um, that is that is planned. Uh, currently, uh, the only way for that development to access uh, the more major roads, I mean Orchard Heights, Dokes Ferry, et cetera, would be to come out right where the high school is on on Landegard and Orchard Heights. And so safety wise, this would um, allow for the creation of a road that actually would go easterly and connect directly down to Dokes Ferry. Uh, routing traffic down that way. In addition, uh, the Colorado uh, drive would have bike lanes and sidewalks on it, something that Landegard Drive does not have because it was originally designed to a very rural standards. Um, in addition, um, I wanted to mention that park access to Straub Nature Park is right down across where this would run into, so it would increase park access as well. Thank you, Councillor, for the discussion. Will the recorder please call the roll? Councillor Stapleton. Aye. Councillor Nishioka. Aye. Councillor Phillips. Aye. Councillor Gwynn. Aye. Councillor Gonzalez. Aye. Councillor Hoy. Aye. Councillor Nordyke. Aye. Councillor Varney. Aye. Mayor Hoy. Aye. Motion passes. All right. Now we are on to public comments for topics not listed on our agenda. As a reminder, folks, step up to the podium, hit the button to turn the microphone on, introduce yourself and either your address or your ward. You have three minutes when the yellow light flashes. That means you have a minute left. When the red light comes on, that means your time's up. First up, we have Marjean Higby. Just for counselors' inf information, we have four folks signed up under number eight. Hello, I'm Marjean Higby, and I live at Horizon House here in Salem, Oregon. And I wanted to talk about the bed bugs here in Salem. It's there's a problem. Um, it's an epidemic, and it's so uninhabitable. I've witnessed it because I've lived with the situation, and it causes homelessness. Um, the EPA, the chemicals they put in the um, products that 
are supposed to get rid of the bed bugs in a home or an apartment or a room that you rent, it doesn't work. It makes it makes people sick and and it it states in the the um, bag that the chemical that treats the bed bug um, situation. It is supposedly harmful to humans and animals. And how safe is the uh, properties after the extermination? Because they, they heat the house up to 180 degrees, I, I guess. And uh, I believe that the government should reimburse the landlord and the tenants and seal off the property and leave everything inside the property and condemn that and get the National Guard and the fire department to burn, to condemn that building with all the stuff in there and burn that down, burn the property down and reimburse the landlord and the tenants for their belongings so they can start over again. And um, I've, I've lived in several places where there's been bed bugs and it's, it's un so uninhabitable. And I, I think that's why I was deathly ill because of the chemicals, it poisons you. And that's about all for tonight. I have sep six other topics I wanted to talk to to the city council about here in Salem. And uh, I think my time's about up. Thank you for your testimony. You, you are more than welcome to submit those comments in writing and everybody will get a copy of those. I can? Yes. Thank you and God bless you for listening. Thank you, thank you for your testimony. Megan Bye -bye. Adams. Oh, cool, I'm on TV. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council representing our great city of Salem. My name is Megan Adams. I'm a third year law student at Willamette University, and I currently look, work at Willamette's uh, clinical law program, which provides estate planning services for Salem and outlying communities in Oregon. Um, in the spirit of this month as National Disability Awareness Month, I'm here to ask uh, and inform that our clinic is currently located at 790 State Street across from Salem's newly remodeled Capitol building. The parking surrounding our building is metered and monitored entirely by the city of Salem. Because of the nature of our work, there is frequent foot traffic of disabled and elderly individuals who need ADA parking when visiting the clinic building. In the spirit of zealous advocacy for my clients and the theme of this month, I have come here to request to the council that an ADA compliant parking space be installed on Winter Street because it is where the clinic's building uh, ADA accessible entrance is currently located. I have used primary channels available for requesting this installation, but I've met delay or <laughs> slowed resistance. Um, I have spoken with the parking enforcement officer who advised that I call the city's traffic engineering department. However, when I did so, I left a voicemail and have not yet heard a response. Uh, my latest form of communication for this inquiry was to contact Mr. Atchison, who was kind enough to reply to my email and graciously told me that he would speak with transportation and staff and when it was practical to do so. I have come here tonight to inform the members of the council that installing an ADA compliant space on Winter Street is presently practical. Our clients come to the clinic to gain peace of mind while confronting the often harsh realities of an aging body. It is both frustrating and heartbreaking to be unable to offer sufficient parking as it is a silent barrier and a reminder of why our services are necessary in the first place. Equal access to parking is a fundamental right that should be afforded to everyone regardless of their physical abilities. I urge you to take action and oversee this installation of an ADA parking space on Winter Street. Thank you for your consideration and the opportunity to speak on this issue and I yield any of my remaining time. Thank you for your testimony. I, I do know that the staff has received your, your request and it's in there in that process. So I'm sure at some point we will hear back from them, but I appreciate your testimony. Thank you. Bringing the context to us. All right, Tom Hoffert. Well, I'm sorry, uh, Councillor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just before Mr. Hoffert speaks, I wanna say that to the, the last gal that spoke, I don't know about this, but I will dig into it. And if I ever needed someone, I would want you in my corner. 
So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Hoffert. Well, thank you, Mayor Hoy and Council, for hearing me today. My name is Tom Hoffert, and I serve as CEO of the Salem Area Chamber of Commerce. We're located at 1110 Commercial Street, Northeast Downtown uh, in Ward 1. I am also a resident of Ward 1. I'm here tonight uh, to speak about the success of rolling out our first flight in commercial air service and to give you the credit you rightfully deserve in, in helping lead this effort. I don't know if our residents are always um, in remembrance of this, but I, I will remind them. Uh, these individuals are elected vol volunteers. There's no paycheck uh, that comes with that, and they literally donate hundreds of their own hours each month on behalf of this city. And I think it's important as a community we remember that. And, and I applaud you uh, for your willingness to serve. It is an incre incredibly challenging position at time. So thank each of you, uh, starting with Mayor Hoy and, and Council President Stapleton and each of you as counselors for supporting the commercial air service effort. Our organization at the Salem Chamber wishes to recognize some additional partners who helped this come to fruition. And some of these have been mentioned before. In addition to the Salem Chamber, our partners at Travel Salem and the Fly Salem Committee and its leader, Brent D. Hart, were instrumental. The Salem Airport Foundation, chaired by Tim Hay, our consultant, Jack Penning at Vol Air Aviation, the entire business community who stepped forward for the minimum revenue guarantee uh, to put those funds in place that allow us to have a bit of a safety net. Our partners, Kirk Sund, Alan Rasmussen, and Doug Brenzier, we appreciate uh, their wisdom and fortitude to get this project done. But there is a big group that we are here to also thank. And that is the city staff, many of whom have de rightfully departed. Uh, a little easier night for them than some of those to my left. John Pascal, Mark Bechtel, Brian Martin, Jim Bonnet, Alan Denon, Kristen Rutherford, new team member Aaron Isom, and certainly our city manager, Keith Staley. There is another individual who was not named that certainly needs us a great deal of appreciation, and that is Courtney Knox Bush. She does an incredible job communicating with the business community. Thank you, Courtney, for your work. I want to thank Avello for coming into this community and willing to take a risk on Salem. We are going to build with you. And I will close by saying the Salem business community hopes that many more Avello types locate the, to the Salem uh, airport at McNary Field, and that it is not one solitary airline, but someday in the near future, we have many other options. This was an incredible success, and our business community looks forward to supporting it each and every day going forward. Thank you all. You deserve that. Thank you. Appreciate those words. Sarah Parkinson. Sarah Parkinson, are you here? I don't see that person here. Give me one more second in case they're within earshot. No. All right. Seeing no further business, we are adjourned. <laughs>